So imagine you're sitting at home and a big thunderstorm rolls through. The street gutters in your neighborhood fill with water headed to the grave. Perhaps you've just mowed your lawn and there's grass clippings in that mix too. Or maybe it's autumn and the leaves are swirling in the street. Where does that water and the grass clippings and the leaves that it's carrying go? When rain falls on our rooftops, our sidewalks, our driveways, our parking lots, and our streets, it can wash off chemicals and natural debris into our water. This is called stormwater runoff, but it does not go to the sewage treatment plant like the water from our sinks, our washing machines, and our toilets. It can get carried directly to our lakes and our rivers, but it can carry with it many pollutants. Many of us can probably guess that carrying those chemicals to the water is not a good thing. However, some of those chemicals come from natural debris like our grass clippings and leaves. This can be a problem because natural debris contains phosphate. Phosphate is a natural organic chemical that actually helps the plants to grow. But in excess, phosphate in our water can be a big problem because it causes algae and weeds in excess and it can reduce the amount of oxygen in the water which affects our fish and our aquatic wildlife. In the case of algae, excess phosphate can cause harmful and toxic algal blooms, which are colonies of algae that grow in excess. And these can be poisonous to humans and animals, and they can also contaminate our drinking water. As you can imagine, this and other effects of having too much phosphate in our water can be a big problem. So how do we remove phosphate from stormwater runoff? The solution might just be in the form of your own neighborhood rain garden. Rain gardens are shallow depressions, perhaps in your front yard or along the streets, that capture this stormwater runoff and infiltrate it into the ground or filter it to remove pollutants. Researchers are studying the benefits and drawbacks of these rain gardens. We want to better understand biofiltration, the process by which natural materials such as sand and compost with plants and microbial communities can treat stormwater runoff. My name is Andy Erickson, and I and other researchers at St. Anthony Falls Laboratory and the University of Minnesota are studying rain gardens. We want to know, can these rain gardens use the process of biofiltration to remove phosphate from stormwater runoff before it gets to our lakes and rivers? Over the last four summers, we've tested 13 different mixtures of sand, compost, and peat, materials that are commonly found in rain gardens to find out which ones can remove phosphate from stormwater runoff. For this study, we created an outdoor experiment where we could test biofiltration. We took 30 buckets and we filled these 30 buckets with materials that we use in rain gardens, including sand, compost, peat, biochar, spent lime, and iron to find out which ones could remove phosphate. Some of these mixes represent the current way we design rain gardens in the state of Minnesota, while others represent new ways we could mix these components to better remove phosphate and treat stormwater runoff. We then spread switchgrass seed over these buckets to simulate the plants that naturally grow in rain gardens to understand the balance between treating and removing phosphate, but also growing healthy plants in our rain gardens. We then took a set amount of phosphate-laden water, added it to the buckets, collecting samples before and after to understand how much phosphate was captured by each of the different mixes. But removing phosphate was not the only thing we were paying attention to. As we touched on earlier, phosphate helps the plants to grow. And so a rain garden without any phosphate would look much more like a sand trap than a rain garden. And no one wants a sand trap, even if it is great at filtering out stormwater pollutants. Because of this, we wanted to strike a balance between capturing phosphate to protect our waterways, but also growing plants so that we have a healthy rain garden. With this as our goal, we made a critical discovery. Most importantly to us, we found that if we mix sand and compost in a layer on top of the rain garden, we could grow plants really well. In addition to this, if we put iron in sand in a layer below that top layer, we can also capture the phosphate that might be released from it. This layered system, 
with a plant growth layer on the top and a phosphate treatment layer on the bottom appears to be the right mixture for a successful pollutant treating rain garden. So what does this mean for you, your community, and the rain gardens in your neighborhoods? It means that we as researchers can now make recommendations to the state of Minnesota about what mixtures can be used in rain gardens across the state so that they can be as effective as possible in both removing phosphate and also growing plants that we all can enjoy. Here in the land of 10,000 lakes, we want our rain gardens to be the best they can be to keep our lakes and rivers clean and healthy. With more funding on its way, my team and I are dedicated to finding natural solutions to Minnesota's most pressing stormwater issues.